Tej Poon of the Royal Gurkha Rifles and from the Queen's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force, Adam Jones. from here is at 10.33 in about 30 seconds. That is so that the journey up to St. Paul's, which goes down Fleet Street to Ludgate Circus and up Ludgate Hill, has been timed at exactly 19 minutes and the coffin will then arrive at the west door of St. Paul's at exactly the right moment. But the setting off is very difficult. They set off and the music is played by the band is Beethoven's Funeral March. There they go.
St. Paul's Cathedral, the west door, the Thatcher family arrived, Sir Mark Thatcher there on the right, his wife Sarah, and Michael Thatcher and Amanda Thatcher will be taking part in the service. And they're greeted by the Lord Mayor of London in his red robes with white ermine on the right there. Sir Mark Thatcher who took his title from his father who was given the baronetcy. And Marco Grass, the partner of Carol Thatcher, there with the black hat, Lady Thatcher's daughter. session has been going now for three minutes or so on its way up past it comes into it comes into Fleet Street goes past the law courts goes past the bar of the city of London the entrance to the city of London St. Paul's Cathedral will be in the city of London. The Lord Mayor, we've got a glimpse of there, uh, will be greeting all the prominent guests and royal guests. Now there may be some shouts as this cortege goes past the narrower parts of Fleet Street. There may be some protests, they're not unexpected. Somebody said that Lady Thatcher herself would be surprised if there weren't protests because she, she always liked an argument and even in death she wouldn't expect people just to come round and to her views and behave as though um, they accepted them. This is the arms reverse position. As the coffin goes past, they go into their heads bowed and they'll remain like that. They don't stay like that for the next 20 minutes. But it's very it's a difficult position to hold. I was talking to one of the officers who had to do this, and it's very easy to lose your orientation and get dizzy when you're looking down at your feet. Very big crowds here. On the way up to St. Paul's, people filling the side streets, hoping to catch a glimpse. I say there was somebody here at three o'clock in the morning. And interestingly, a lot of young people in the crowds, not people who uh, knew Margaret Thatcher when she was Prime Minister, but have come here to mark this occasion, whether it's this very majestic ceremonial that's attracted them, or the ideas that Margaret Thatcher had, or maybe it's just the notion of being part of a big national event, which everybody's heard about. But at any rate, the crowds are rather larger, I think, than people had expected. Now the route is lined by the 1st Battalion Welsh Guards. So the, this part of the procession dominated by the Welsh Guards, really. What with Bill Mott, who's the garrison sergeant major, he's in charge of all the ceremonial in London. And then his brother, Major Mott. 
behind and all is going well so far there have been no disturbances and the crowds on either side have been applauding behind another detachment again scotch guards royal engineers royal artillery royal navy welsh guards and they're what's called the escort party who stand march behind the coffin to close off the, the rear, so to speak, of that procession. The Royal Marine Band from Portsmouth moving seamlessly from one funeral march to another. The Royal Marine Bands were also incidentally in the Falklands. So there is a pattern and a sense to all the decisions that have been made here. And you can't hear it, but while this procession is going on, every minute a gun is being fired from the Tower of London. Using guns, two of which were actually used in the fall, they're now ceremonial guns. Those of you who are of a military disposition will know that this is not a slow march as such, but a sort of half step. It is marching slowly, and it is very difficult to keep this pace. It's quite a long stride, and 70 paces a minute, and it's time to bring the procession to St Paul's at precisely 11 o'clock in about a quarter of an hour. Outside St. Paul's, we're waiting for the imminent arrival of Her Majesty the Queen. The National Anthem plays.
black handle and a scabbard of velvet. A match to the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Coming into this great west door, only open for ceremonial occasions, giving this wonderful view from the centre of the cathedral down the steps into the London scene outside. welcomed by the clergy of St. Paul's and her presence here has been noted. She was a guest at Lady Thatcher's 80th birthday party and she herself decided and said to come here, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the last to greet her there. Gifford is the Lord Mayor who will precede the Queen with this procession of the clergy. Takes her up the nave and to the thrones where she'll be sitting. the Archbishop's chaplain going across the Canterbury, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the chapter, the Chancellor of the Diocese of London, the Bishop of London will be giving the address. The Bishop of London there with the white mitre. And then the Lord Mayor Duke of Edinburgh on the right and Her Majesty the Queen on the left there. In the meantime now, ten minutes until this procession with the coffin comes up. This is where famously the Duke of Wellington's purse couldn't get up the hill. The road to different in those days, and the whole thing was held up. Gun carriages pulled by horses are for non royal, non royal um, processions. The members of the royal family, ever since Queen Victoria's funeral, Heads of state, I should say, monarchs, are pulled traditionally by the Royal Navy, had to take over when the horses couldn't. There was some trouble apparently coming into Ludgate Circus, just a bit back from where we are now, with some things being thrown at the horses, which has disturbed them. Now the horses are trained for that kind of thing, and over the last weeks or so have been um, put through their paces rather, but if they're tossing their head a little and a little uneasy, it'll be 
because of that, but the riders with each pair of horses, their job is just to keep them calm and steady and keep them going. We don't know exactly what was thrown or what the noise was down there, but something happened which has slightly disturbed them. Those are not missiles being thrown, but flowers being strewn on the road. And that may frighten the horses just as much as we do. Remember it, it says down as funeral flowers were thrown at the hearse. And the Royal Marine Band is just coming up towards St Paul's now. carriage is now approaching the west door and the steps of St. Paul's Cathedral where the guard of honour of the Welsh guards stands facing the cathedral. That face on the right, Queen Anne, the statue of Queen Anne who was sovereign when St. Paul's was completed. of the statue of Queen Anne just in sight there. 